welcome to episode 51 of my Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I'm going to be continuing in the living room and I want to get that room to the moving in stage and then move on to the dining room. So let's get started. Okay so the first job for today is done and that was to cut the cove in for the living room. So there's my seven pieces there and as always I've just popped the numbers on the back of the pieces so I know where they go back. With some pieces obviously it's obvious like where your longer pieces go but when you're sort of cutting smaller pieces to go around a chimney breast for example it's a good idea just to pop the numbers on and I sort of work you know clockwise around the room and then when you've painted them and come to fit them you'll know where they go. Again I'm not going to go into too much detail with the coving because I have done a separate video on cutting coving but just my always my main top tip is when you put your coving into your mitre block is to picture the top of the mitre block as your ceiling and if you think that butts up against the ceiling then you'll get a good idea of where your mitre needs to go and which way around it needs to go but like I say if you're just starting out with your coving do take a look at that other video and I'll try to remember to link to it at the end and I'm sure you know by now but when I sort of first started working on my doll's house and came to do the coving I got into a real mess with it because I just couldn't figure out once I got back to the cutter which way round the mitres should go <laughs> and it can be quite tricky. Okay so I'm going to get these pieces out of here now take them back into the craft room and now start cutting the skirting board. So I've just brought the coving back into my craft room spotted the little deer having some bird seed out there. Now, I think this is the baby that was actually born in the garden last year. <laughs> I think she's seen me. And if you can see, just sort of behind her, there's a bit of a hole in the hedge. And that's where she sort of dashes off to when she hears a noise or when a car goes past or something. But whenever she's out there, I like to just sort of stop and watch because I think it's so lovely to see. I remember when we first moved here, we sort of started exploring the woods at the back and we saw sort of three or four of them and we were so amazed by it because we'd never been that close to them. So to think of them actually coming into our back garden, we do feel rather privileged, I'd say. I haven't named this one. I normally give all the sort of wild animals that come into the garden names. So if you'd like to name this little deer, then drop a comment in the box below. And this is a female, and you can tell the males because they have those little horns on the front of their heads. Right, I suppose I better get on with some work. And that is the skirting cut as well. So I just want to show you how I've cut the pieces there around the chimney breast and I've done this on both sides. So if you have a look there, I've cut the piece to size and then I've just cut out a little bit to go around the lip of the half there. So you would just get your um, width of the piece by measuring obviously from the flat edge of your fire surround to your wall do your mitre at this end and then you'd go back in and do a little measurement for the height and a little measurement for the depth and then just cut that little square corner out and it just finishes it off really nicely like I say I've done that at both sides there I haven't actually looked around there yet and I can't really see how that looks without my glasses on but I think that looks like a pretty good fit there and obviously when it's sort of hidden a little bit it doesn't matter if you have got a little bit of gap in but any gap in showing anywhere on your skirting or coving can be filled as well. Because like I say, it is difficult getting mitre joins just right. But I always prefer to do them because I just think it looks so much neater than having, you know, a straight edge and then having another piece sitting in front of it. So if you can sort of get your head around it, then I would advise doing the mitre joins. It will just give you a nice, neat finish. So I'm going to take these through to the craft room now as well 
but what I really want to do today, you know, while I've got that paint out, is get the dining room to the sort of same stage as the living room. So I found a nice wallpaper, which is sort of like a damask design. I need to make that up onto a full sheet and then I'm going to do this again the same as the living room so one full wall and then the chimney breast and I think that will look really nice in there. The only thing is when I've held the wallpaper up to the flooring which is very pale it doesn't quite go so I think I'm going to give the flooring another coat of paint and just make it a little bit more creamy but let me get the wallpaper made up onto a proper A4 sheet and then I can show you the design and how that looks with the flooring. So I've printed my chosen wallpaper off as A4 sheets and it's this lovely sort of damask design and it's sort of like a, a creamy gold colour. It actually looks a lot lighter through the lens but it has got a nice sort of creamy gold background. But if I just sort of bring that over to the doll's house and just lay that there on the floor. Let me just get the art light again. That looks a little bit shadowy in there. <laughs> um, in fact, I, I don't think you can actually tell with the light on either. But the floor is quite pale and the wallpaper is sort of quite creamy. So they don't quite match. So what I am going to do is do another coat of the natural calico um, paint on the floor. Is that better? Yeah, I think you can see a little bit better there. I'll do another coat of the natural calico paint on the floor and probably not sand it back this time. So that will be the same colour as the walls, but then I am going to be having a lovely big rug in the centre there and we'll have a nice big sort of cream rug, maybe um, do like a damask design on there as well. So that will actually be my next job before I obviously apply the wallpaper and then paper the chimney breast as well. So I've just put a little bit of masking tape there at the bottom of each door surround just so I don't get the paint on the door there and then I'll be careful around the rest of the room but if I do get a little bit on the walls at the bottom there I've got my skirting board to cover it so that's not too much of a disaster and I'm going to be using the natural calico emulsion again for the floor so this room will be sort of very neutral colour scheme and then the sort of beigey gold wallpaper and then the pops of colour will come in the form of the blue and white china that I'm going to be having quite a bit of in here on the dresser which will stand on that back wall and then dotted around the room as well always start at the back and go across even though it's tempting to sort of follow your floorboards towards the front but this way you're not going to put your arm into the paint I'll probably give this two and possibly even three coats just to get a really nice solid coverage so whilst the dining room floor is drying, I'm back in my craft room and I'm just going to prepare the skirting and coving for paint. And I was going to do it all together, sort of wait until I've got the dining room bits ready as well. But there's quite a bit to do before I get to that stage in there. So I just wanted to get these out of the way and fitted. And then I can move back down to the dining room. Once you've sanded, always get rid of your sanding dust and you can do that just by using a soft paintbrush. So all of my pieces are now attached to my painting sheet using a bit of masking tape there apart from my long piece which I'll just do in my hand because it was too long for the piece of card but this just makes it easier to paint them and you don't get as much paint on your fingers. And again I'll probably do two coats of the natural calico on these pieces and I really can't wait to get these fitted 
and get the living room to the moving in stage. Okay, so the flooring has had three coats of paint and that is now dry. Now, if you can see that sort of slightly darker strip there, that's just where I've used the random unfinished flooring. And it's made from different types of wood. So sometimes if you're using a lighter paint rather than a dark wood, wood stain or varnish, then you will be able to see the odd strip or see the colour of the odd strip beneath your paint. But because of where it's positioned, and I'm going to have a unit at the back or a dresser at the back, and then a large rug over the rest of the floor. I'm not too worried about that, but if it was somewhere visible, then I would probably sand that back and use a bit of primer and then go in with the color again. But otherwise, I'm really happy with that. So my skirting and coving pieces are all now dry and I'm going to begin by fitting the coving. So I've just put a bit of kitchen towel on the floor there just to protect the floor from any glue splashes. And I've laid the coving around the room in numbered order. Okay, so let's make a start. Okay, so that's the coving fitted. And I always love seeing it around the chimney breast because I think it looks really nice framing the top of the chimney breast there. And there will be a little bit of filling to do and touching up of paint. But what I want to do now is to get the skirting fitted. And that's the skirting done as well. And I'm really pleased with how it all looks. Again, a little bit of filling and repainting to do on the skirting. And this is now dry, but I've just left this piece of masking tape here to show you what I've done. When I put the skirting in place, this end kept sort of pushing itself forwards. And I think that's because there was a rough section on the wall under there. It must have been filler or, you know, some of the wood that, wood that I'd pulled away when I removed the last lot of skirting board. So no matter how much I sort of pressed here, this kept pinging forward. So just a little bit of masking tape to hold it into place. And just make sure you don't get that on your wallpaper. But any paint that it sort of pulls up like it's done there, I can just touch that up when I go around tomorrow with the filler. And another thing I find that you notice or that happens when you're sort of holding bits into place is that you spot little things in other rooms or in the room that you're working in. So I've just noticed there's a floorboard that's lifting up here and that's obviously where I've put too much wood dye underneath it and it's loosened the self-adhesive back in. So I need to stick that down couple of other sort of little bits I've noticed around the edge a um, little bit of paper coming out there that I'll need to trim off and the ends of these pieces of coving will all need painting we know that this will all need tidying up along the front edges I'll probably leave all of these sort of edge bits until the end and then go around and sort of touch up all the paint any sort of loose bits of paper you can stick down and things like that. But when you are sort of attaching fittings and you're just sort of stood holding the glue or holding them into place until the glue dries, it's a good time to sort of have a good look round and see if there are any bits that you've missed. And obviously I've still got a lot to do in here. But one of the things I was thinking about up here in the guest bedroom, I didn't actually realise until I was sort of stood there with my head almost in the room, that I've got quite a bit of space there between the door and the dressing table. The chair's sort of in the way a little bit at the moment, but I've probably got a good couple of inches in there. So I was thinking of perhaps building a lingerie chest. Maybe something with sort of four or five drawers that will just be a little bit higher than the dressing table. And that will then give us another area to get some colour into that section of the wall. And then I was thinking of having maybe sort of two or three prints hanging above there. I'm going to make another cushion for the bed and so another one of the green silk cushions. We sort of played around with those a little bit and I'm already crocheting another of those teal green ones to go on the little dressing table chair. Not too keen on that checked one being a sort of cushion at the front, although I have got check in the under blanket and in the pillows at the back there. 
and I may redo the lamps as well. I think maybe they're sort of a little bit lost back there, being that size, so I might do something a little bit bigger. I'm not sure yet. I'll have a think about that. And I was just thinking about the displays and everything I can do on top of the mantelpiece and on top of this little dresser here, on top of the wardrobe, suitcases, and maybe a travel bag as it's a guest room. Obviously got to make rugs for every room and that's something else I will be doing as part of this um, My Doll's House Diary series and we'll go through the process of actually designing your own and then obviously making them. And the rugs I've made in the past I've used um, I think an 18 count canvas and a crawl wool and I always find them a little bit thick so I might try to sort of go down a step and see if I can make some finer rugs but I'm really looking forward to doing those and the one in the dining room I'll probably copy the wallpaper I think I said that earlier but that was just sort of something I was thinking about again as I was stood sort of pressing skirting into place um, lots of things sort of buzz through my head really as I'm doing things like that sometimes I just like to sit in front of the doll's house with a cup of tea just you know put a chair right in the center and just sit and look in each room and just have a think and you'll be surprised how many ideas you'll come up with you know pieces of furniture you can make decor ideas all sort of things like that so if you have a sort of spare five minutes and I know we're all sort of really busy nowadays but if you do just pull up a chair <laughs> pull up a seat and uh, just sit with a cup of tea or coffee and um, and have a think and I absolutely can't wait to get back into the craft room and start working on the accessories again. And I'm actually working on a room box at the moment as well over on my Patreon channel, which is a um, sort of office for an interior designer. So I'm really enjoying making all the little bits and pieces for that as well. And that's just a little sort of two part thing that I'm doing as part of the monthly vlogs, which I call Tea Biscuits and Dolls House Chatter. And that's tier number one and you just sign up for one pound or one dollar a month and you get a video on the first of every month and all of the funds that i get from patron help go towards making the videos for patron and for youtube so if you're able to sign up that's very much appreciated but if not that's fine i'll always be here on youtube Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today. I think it's nearly half past five now. So I'll call it a day and then come back in the morning and my first job will be to do the filling on the skirting and coving in there. And then we'll go back down into the dining room and I'll paper that long wall and then also add the paper to the chimney breast, get that stuck into place. And then actually another one of those things I was thinking about as I was holding my skirting into place was that back door. So I'll be able to fit the chimney breast and cut and fit the coving, but I won't do the skirting until I've got that door into place and fitted the internal surround. I think that's going to be a little bit too much for this episode. So I'll make that the next episode and we'll get that back door made. And hopefully that's something that you'll find useful as well. I know we've done the internal doors, but I want to do like a sort of eight paned door to go out there like it used to have. So we'll do that. And I'm because I've sort of had trouble fitting the skirting boards. I think if you remember in the bedroom, I couldn't get that bit of skirting back into place. So I had to sort of remove it and cut a new piece. And that's because I'd put the door surrounds in place first. And actually you should do it in the order so that everything that's going in the room is there before you fit the, the skirting and coving. So I'll do it the right way around this time. So I'll finish off this episode with sort of getting the dining room as far on as I can. And then the next episode will be that external door. Okay, so have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the morning.
Okay, so I'm going to make a start on the filling in the front room and I've got a few little corners to do in the mitre corners of the coving and the skirting and then a few bits around the door. So I want to fill and then go over with the paint once the filler has completely dried. So the filler I'm actually going to be using today is this Ron Seal Smooth Finish Filler and this is a brand new pot and a lot of people ask me which one in particular I use but I don't think it really matters about the manufacturer so it doesn't have to be Ron Seal but as long as it says a smooth finish filler or a fine filler or something like that just something that is going to be fine enough to work into the smaller gaps that you'll get in a doll's house. Okay, so let's get this open and we'll get started. So I just wanted to show you the consistency of this. See how sort of light and fluffy it is. And that's the sort of thing that you want to look for, something that's really going to work into those smaller gaps. Now I'm using this little sort of glue spreader, but you can use um, any sort of small spreader or a cocktail stick or something like that, something small enough to work it into the gaps. So I've just got a really small bit there on the spatula and then I'm just going to work it into that first gap. And then once you've sort of worked it in to the gap, scrape off the excess and that way at the end you don't have so much sanding to do. You only have a little bit of sort of surface sanding to do. Like there, I've actually got it into the moulded part of the door, so I'll scrape that away as well. I'm sure you've all done filling before. But it's just about, you know, one sort of area at a time. And using the least amount that you can. side done. So that's all of the gaps in there now filled. So I'm now going to leave that to dry. So whilst the filler is drying I'm going to make a start on the chimney breast and again I won't go into too much detail on this because I did this obviously in the last episode in the living room but I'm just going to start by attaching a piece of the lining paper. And that's just because the opposite wall, where I'm also going to be having my patterned wallpaper, has got lining paper on it and I want the colour to look the same. So if you just lay a thinner paper over natural wood, that's going to have an effect on the colour. So it will look a sort of slightly different shade. So I always like to apply the paper to the same sort of backing. So I'm just going to start by applying the glue directly to my chimney breast if my glue nozzle isn't bound up again. <laughs> no, okay so that's now covered I'm going to leave the glue to dry and then I'll trim off the flaps and trim out the chimney breast part Okay, so the filler is all now dry. That's been drying for probably about an hour now. And if you don't apply it too thickly, you will find that obviously it will dry a little bit quicker. So I'm now coming in with a 500 grade sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off all the excess. Okay, so that's all of the sanding done as well really pleased with how that all looks. So I've got my soft brush there so I'm going to clear out the kitchen towel now and then brush the floor free of any filler dust and then I can come in with the paint and touch up all of those areas. So I've touched up the paint as well and also did a few patches on the walls where there was a little bit of glue or a few marks and things. If ever I'm sort of using a pencil I always end up getting a bit on the walls, so I painted over a few pencil marks as well. And that room is just about ready now for moving in. 
I've still got to stick down that bit of floorboard but I'm really pleased with how that looks. So what I want to do now is get the chimney breast for the dining room papered and also get that main wall papered. Okay so I'm now going to add the printed wallpaper to my chimney breast and I've trimmed off the sides that were overhanging but I'm going to leave that central piece until I've actually applied the printed paper and then cut those out as one piece. And just having a think about which way around the design should go and I've decided on having it that way around. I think it looks nicer than having the sort of points going upwards like that. I'm not sure if there is a correct way with it. So I suppose it's just a question of choosing, you know, the way around that you like. But then these sort of bows look right that way around, I think. So I think that is the correct way. But whatever way you choose, if you're sort of doing two separate walls, then do remember to put the other piece on that way around as well. <laughs> And again, I'm only saying that because that's something I've done in the past and that's very annoying once you've sort of spent time on, you know, applying the wallpaper. Right, so let's get a bit of glue on here again. And again, I'll just do this front section and, um, and then do the sides. And I think I've got a blocked nozzle again. Just smoothing that into place. And what I'm actually going to do is go and get my hair dryer and give that a quick blast before I then glue down the sides. Okay, so that's the sides done as well and I used the hairdryer on both of those so they both look nice and smooth. Now this is my side that's going to be more visible so I'm actually going to leave a bit of an overlap so I've got that to tuck behind but I am going to get rid of a little bit of this bulk so I'm just going to trim up there with my scissors. hidden sort of behind that leg. This one I'm going to trim. Actually I can probably just trim up the back of that as well with my scissors. I'm just going to use my knife but there's no need to sort of cut it right against the, the leg even on the side that it's not going to be visible. So that's that and then I just want to cut out this central section now and um, for that I am going to use the knife because that gives you a nice sharp clean edge. Now I did say yesterday about getting the dining room as far forward as I can but actually I've remembered that I've got to go into town this afternoon so I'm going to have to leave it there for today. I can't fit the chimney breast yet because obviously I've got to make the hearth and the surround so we'll do that in the next episode and make that external door as well. But what I want to do now is just go and have a look at this in place in the dining room. Okay, so it will obviously look a lot different with the um, hearth in place and the fire surround, but just to give you an idea of the colour scheme in there, I think that looks really nice. And this one actually stands further to this side, so it won't run in alignment with the one above, but it will sort of sit centrally between the door opening and this outer wall. So. As I say, I wanted to get a bit more done this episode, but I'll start the next episode with the wallpapering, so that long wall, 
and then the finish off the uh, chimney breast so I can get that fitted so with the hearth and the surround then we can do the back door and then we can do the coving and skirting so that will all be in the next episode along with anything else that I can fit in Okay, so that's it for today and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. As usual, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but I will continue as soon as possible with episode 52 and we'll get that dining room to the moving in stage as well. Now, I'm about to head off into town, but I really look forward to reading your comments when I get back later today. And please do leave a comment. I always read them and I have a notification pop up on my mobile phone whenever you you leave a comment but I don't always have time to reply to them but I like I say I do read them so do please leave a comment even if it's just to say hello okay so that really is it for today I'll see you again in episode 52 so until then take care bye <laughs>